All right, my friends, JLC Live. This is a fabulous show, and I got the full Build Show crew here today. I got Jake, Wade, Brian, and Steve. We're gonna bring you the best of, and guess what else we're bringing you? Build Show Live in November, brought to you by the same people that do JLC Live. We got a lot to see. You ready, boys? Let's get going. Hey, Matt. So we're over here at the Sierra Pacific booth. I don't know how familiar you are with these windows. Not super familiar, but you've used them a bunch though, right? We've used them a bunch. I've used their triple glaze, but since I've used them, they've actually improved on some things. Cool. So I'm get to see some things new, but there are some really cool things here. All right, talk to me they about it. They have a couple lines that are available in triple glaze. We've used their triple glazed Aspen series, which like is in that. all wood. Yep. Um, one of the things that I love about these doing coastal work is they cut and then finish and oh, powder coat. So in other words, that powder coat isn't done and then they cut everything. It's right. the other way around. Yeah, oh, the that's beauty is, is if that joint moved even the slightest, you'd see that silver metal there, uh -huh. but you don't see it here because it's neat. true color all the way through. And I suspect in a coastal environment, that's a big deal because then you don't have any bare aluminum in exactly. there. Exactly. That aluminum's all powder coated in the entire window. Exactly. That's pretty neat. I like and, that. And then, like I said, this is their all wood frame. They also have one that's a hybrid. It's their H3 product where we have a vinyl insert in there. So it finishes in wood, but it offers some economy there by having that. And it's also available in triple glazed That's pretty neat. and triple glazed double hung, which that? is very, very rare. That's nice. And when it comes to options, they have something like over 50 colors available here. But including yeah. a bunch that look like, uh, you know, an anodized aluminum type of uh, product. This is really nice. Exactly. Uh, I also noticed, Steve, in their catalog, they have a, you're not going to be able to, to feel this on camera, right? But they call this peppered steel. It kind of feels like- It has a little that, texture to it. It has some texture to it. I like yeah, that. Almost That's like a tar paper kind of. Kind of like, yeah, or, or almost like a, uh, what's that wet or dry sandpaper yeah, uh, kind exactly. of feel. Uh, exactly. Is that thousand grit or whatever it is? That's kind of yep. cool. I like yep. that. And you know, some of the other things that, I, that I've used these guys, it's funny because like you, you could go and talk about, hey, I'm going to use those windows, but some of their details, like the fact that they're one of the few window manufacturers that have a 5 8 inch mutton bar. Oh, uh, that's nice. And so in New England, when you're looking for that nice fine line, mm -hmm. we have the option of the putty bar, the traditional one, as well as the square stick. That's pretty cool. I, you know, I'm seeing more and more that I really like that putty style. Yeah. Uh, it's It kind of allows you to go transitional like is this a new modern window or is this harken back to yeah. the brent hall style window right? and it's somewhat of an illusion because when you look at the square one you get that full five eights right. here you get the five eights back at it the glass it. but it thins it yeah so the mind is really seeing that face and they're showing that on one of these windows over here yeah. that's a casement and i like that style looks that really that five eights thin line is really nice yeah. on there and then to complete their series they have a whole cast of curtain wall products uh -huh. that they can build out of. Check that out. So curtain wall meaning there's some structure to the window, right? They've embedded some steel or aluminum in there. So you can get a nice thin line on a big window, kind of like a commercial window. Yeah. If you're looking for say multi-story, you know, beautiful wide angled look of the yeah. ocean or the mountains and they just, moved up to an FSC certified white oak out Ooh. of Pennsylvania for their curtain wall product. I like that? I like that. That's pretty cool. Were you telling me there's some story about these guys and owning forests as well? Yeah, so there, I've been out to their factory in Northern California. They're the largest privately held landowner in America. They have over two and a half million acres and they manage their own forests. I had the opportunity to talk to their forestry department they have a hundred year plan in managing the forest. Holy cow, how about that? Yeah, so it's like three generations ahead of where they are to, you know, take care of our forest. So they're they're a great company. They're they're headed by a gentleman, his nickname is Red, and I've met Red personally, and there's not much finer than Red. He takes care of his That's employees. Awesome. If you talk to their employees, 
it's we're here because this company takes care of us. That's pretty awesome. It's a, it's a great company to work for. They're trying to do the right thing in all their decisions they make. Their support is impeccable. Our reps here in New England, they take care of us. If we have a problem, they take care of it that day. Some good stuff, guys. Thanks for the tour, Steve. We're at the Sierra Pacific booth at JLC Live. All right, Jake, we're at the Huber booth, and I know you've used a bunch of their Advantech glue before. Yeah. Talk to me about this stuff. Well, let, okay, we've been using just Advantech for nearly 20 years. Yep, which is and, this subfloor right here. Yep. And uh, anytime that we can, from one manufacturer, have a system, which is kind of what they're known for, is for systems sure. approach. Yep. We have a subfloor that's warranted to go with a specific glue yes and like why wouldn't you just use the manufacturer's product first yep. of all if you're gonna yep. if you believe in one you can but we've had a really hard time getting it back apart <laughs> so we've put a couple things together incorrectly that's with... the deal with this is that it bonds it so well yeah. you're not going to get it apart yeah. and it bonds in in the wet in the cold it's yeah. not like having cans of subfloor adhesive around where yeah. you're trying really hard to get it to yes. squeeze out and then yep. you're hoping both things are dry enough that they stick. Yeah. Uh, it is a different product. And I think one of the other things that most people don't catch about it is like you only need like one of those for eight bottles of, of squeezy glue. Yeah, it's pretty know? crazy. So. so to your point of it sticks really well when you put it down with this, Maybe 10, more than 10 years ago, I started using Advantech after a plywood issue I had on my very first house I built in 2005 as, oh, as my okay. own builder. My next house, I, I didn't want the swelling on the plywood, so I switched to Advantech. I've used it ever since, but I started using regular uh, Gund uh, yeah. adhesive, the brand that you probably know that I don't want to disparage. But I had a problem where I had to cut something out and fix some plumbing on a house. And I was shocked by how easily the glue came off yeah. of the subfloor, and uh, I think I was using eye joists on that job. And what it told me was, uh-oh, is this glue really working if I can get this off so easily? Yeah. And what I realized was that the polyurethane glue in the Advantech, when they make it and, and glue that wood together, yeah. wasn't bonding well to the other type of glue that I was using that was out of the can. Yeah. And so the deal with this is this is an all per all polyurethane, right? You know, we know the the Ape brand yeah. of glue. Did you catch how I, yes. I didn't say you their didn't name? didn't say the brand name. <laughs> uh, that we all know, that's that's a polyurethane glue that yep. we kind of know that brand. That's exactly what this is. It's all polyurethane, but they've formulated it in a way that's made to stick subfloors down. And this, yeah. this demo is kind of cool where they're like, look, here's two sheets of three quarter, and we've got like a four foot joy spacing, which, yep. which you're not gonna have, no. right? But if we, if we just screw it down, we can still be bouncy. But on the other hand, if we glue those two sheets together just with this Advantech glue, it's crazy how stiff this is compared to this. Can you see my feet bouncing on there? It's shockingly, you like my dance, it is. didn't you? Yes, that he's, was- He's giggling at my dance. Anytime we can get him to pretend like he's Dance Dance Revolution on <laughs> camera. It, I mean, Yes, it's a very engaging display, yeah. but it actually is a very honest thing. Like, yeah. we talk to them about how they put their trailer together, and it's just a couple guys in a parking lot gluing stuff together yeah. for that. Like, there's no special technique here. All it's right. just glue so. it in. It's a systems approach, and that's one of the reasons why we really like Huber, is that yeah. all their products, they have the accessories that go with it. Yep. You're not reading a tech sheet like, oh, what glue do I need to use? What, am I what tape am I going to use? the warranty by bringing in another manufacturer. Exactly. Good stuff from the Huber booth here at JLC Live. So, man, check this out. What? Mike, that screw, like, disappeared. What the heck is this? Well, I'm not a magician, even though... Sometimes as custom builders, we feel we, we have to We need to be, be. Yes. that's true. But uh, I saw this product today here at JLC. It is a composite decking. It's, uh, it's made of actually crushed limestone and a resin with a rubber skin on the top. And fiberglass too, by the way. So crushed limestone, resin and fiberglass core. And then this rubber top, the rep was telling us is kind of like uh, the bottom of your sole in your shoe, right? Yeah. And when you sink a screw into it, you kind of, it disappears in that rubber face. Isn't that wild? It's crazy. almost like you stepped on a nail with your shoe in some respects. 
you know, at the houses I build, we do a lot of um, balconies, and we were kind of getting sick of the normal composite-looking decks. Yep. They look a little fake at times. Yeah. This has a um, an oak pattern. Um, looks looks really good. Yeah. It's impressive. The other thing that I liked about this mic, check this out. This cap is bendable, and so if you're doing curves on your decks, uh, instead of putting a uh, you know steam bender in or a heat machine, let's say if you're using a composite deck, you could actually screw this in and start bending that around to some places. It's a pretty wild little product, I gotta say. What do you think about it? I think it's really cool. I'm definitely gonna be looking into it. Another nice feature is that it's dimensionally stable, so you're not gonna get a lot of expans expansion and contraction in this in the different seasons which yeah. we build in chicago we have all the seasons and no water period. absorption they said it's this this could even be ground contact yeah, pretty neat that's for companies cool. based in england and apparently this is being used a lot in europe even mentioned that they have some of this at the at wimbledon yeah well, uh you know in england so this is yeah so this is a pretty it sounds like an well-used product overseas but i've never heard of this before we're at Millboard here at JLC 2024. By the way, go follow Mike and his amazing company up in Chicago. Hey, I'm Zach Detmore. We're at the Stealth Mount booth, and uh, there's a couple cool things. I'll save this for last, but a caulking tube holder, and it's just two screws on, so good for the trailer or shop. I think specifically like vehicles that are moving, trailers, vans, stuff like that. This one's gonna be good because it's gonna hold on to it. Um, this one's for aerosol cans. These are for hanging your, your drills with hooks. So I have a couple of these, these bit mounts. I try and keep one on every drill um, because then you're not holding the bits in your teeth and you have everything you need, especially we use like the GRK tips. So we have three different tips. I like that a lot. But this one's, this one's a new one for me. So these feet they sell and they lock in. You can put this on anything. You could just buy a piece of plywood and put these feet on and it would integrate with a pack out. But this is a battery holder. You can get it from Milwaukee or Makita, um, different brands, but it's kind of a nice little light tote. I've made these out of plywood in the past and they're so heavy, we end up not using them and just carrying batteries uh, or throwing them into tool bags. But this is pretty clever um, and it just clips right on there. Pretty solid idea. I could see myself getting some of these and it's just the modular nature of the system. If you're going with pack out, um, it's an easy way to keep things organized. You're not spending time making little jigs. Um, it's a pretty cool product from Stealth Mount. Check it out. All right, Steve Basic Architect. Hey, we're out here at JLC Live in Providence. We're doing the best of, and we stopped by Superior Wall. Now, some of you might know Superior Wall from some of my previous videos. Some might not. It just so happens I have Aaron here Aaron is the owner at TB Builds, and he was actually the installer at our offsite build when we chose to move towards Superior Walls. Now, Superior Walls is an offsite manufactured um, foundation system. So, the beauty of it is that it gets built somewhere else under very good quality control conditions, trucked out to the site, and then we have Aaron installing it. So. Aaron, tell us a little bit about TB Builds. Yeah, so we started the company in uh, 2016 and we started with Superior Walls and started more or less just working with the people in New England, builders, homeowners, and just repping the product. And we kind of grew into an install company right. and over time, just providing more of a turnkey solution, right? So I think the hardest thing about, you know, construction sometimes is just getting out of the ground, right. and getting out of the ground efficiently. Uh, especially here in New England, you don't really have a, a lot of time to, to get your homes built. So it's a compressed timeline. So that's kind of the thing that we, we try to focus on is just getting out of the ground faster. Yeah, and I and out at our offsite build, I think you were there for about three and a half days total. Yeah, absolutely. If I remember correctly, it was probably somewhere around 430 linear feet of foundation wall. It closed on a dime, did a superb job um, installing it. and. You know, let's talk a little bit about the basics of the superior wall. It has these cavities and these ribs built in for the strength, right? That's right. What, uh, what's the PSI on the concrete? Yeah, it's a 5,000 PSI concrete. 5,000 PSI, and with that comes a waterproofing warranty. That's right, 15 years, so damp proof. And uh, yeah, so that's from sidewall water penetration. 
Now, I know some of the myths, some of you out there, the skeptics, you sit there and say, well, I don't want to, I'm not going to put a bolted foundation system. I'm not going to rely on caulking to keep my water out, even though you're going to build the above grade wall and fill that with caulking, thinking you're going to get water and keep it out. But um, for this particular project, our offsite build, it was a superb choice by the homeowner to do it. Um, you compounded that choice by just making it even more successful. One of the things that I like from the building science perspective is not only are we getting the foundation system, but we're getting an integrated insulation system with the product, right? That's right. And so the panel we're looking at here, this is the 113 uh, panel, I believe, yeah, right? Yeah, so it's our XI wall, R12.3. And yeah, this is a, a very common wall for us. We can increase that R value, so uh, 21.3. And, and I think you know, that's what we used at the uh, offsite build, we right? Did. The X21 or... Right, that client chose to, to go with a higher R value, yep. um, you know, which is great. But as you can see here, you can still add additional insulation if you choose to. There's plenty of cavity space to add insulation, so. And because you're using a, a rigid insulation in there with the foil face, that means we can put in an unfaced bat there, which is a less expensive operation or right. insulation option, but that improves that insulated value of that wall by probably another R15, or in this case, another R21. So if you're looking to build that family room or media room in the basement, you have that option. That's right. I, I think when we talk to our clients and, and you think about what that finished space, that finished basement is, um, you know, it doesn't feel like a basement. And that's really right. the biggest takeaway. It's hard to explain, but when you're actually in the basement. It's not hard to explain. I, I actually stop using the word basement when I talk to clients because mm. clients have this bad connotation of, oh, basement. That means it's dark, it's damp, it's musty. No, right. we're building basements nowadays, and, and like you just said, that are of the same quality as the above grade space, right? We're putting in $100,000 media rooms in the ground, right? That is just perfect quality space. So having systems that can aid in the success of that, it's just a great system. A couple other things that I love about this, it comes drywall ready. Correct. Right? So the metal stud is in fully integrated to each panel. Yep. And if I turn it this way, you'll see it's already pre-drilled and ready to be wired. Yeah, exactly. So that's kind of one of the benefits too is let's say maybe the budget is a little tight on a project and you can't finish your basement right away. One of the things you can still do is run all your electrical, mount all of your boxes, switches, and leave it so it's yep. got the fire rating you can leave the the insulation exposed right and not sheetrock yeah let's say in a year or two you know you want to finish the basement then you can just add your sheetrock after yeah that's a nice benefit no it's a great system you did a great job thank you for your hard work thank you. out there at the off-site build um you know those that came after you we just compounded success on top of your success out there and it's turning into a very successful project for all of you out there, go hit superiorwalls.com, I believe. Go check it out and see if this is right for your next project. And it took me a really long time to understand that the majority of the people that call our office are not gonna be our clients and it's not the right choice to have them as our clients. We get, how much does it cost to build the way you guys built nonstop. And I generally answer by saying our cost is about plus five to seven percent over what you would spend on a normal customer. Instead of saying if you're gonna spend a million dollars you're gonna spend an extra hundred grand with us or eighty grand with us. Five to seven percent is a decent amount of money. We'll talk about why we make that argument in a second. But it took us a long time to understand that somebody had to pay for these things too. So I would say in our market, we're delivering energy efficiency, actually nationally, we're probably delivering energy efficiency at a lesser cost per square foot than anybody else out there. Hey, Steve Basic. We're over here, JLC Live Providence. I'm making a quick stop, True Exterior. I use this product a lot. I love it. 
You've probably seen a bunch of projects. Here you can see this is their V groove here, painted, takes paint very well, takes edge nailing very well. And also the thing that I really like is it has some very traditional siding profiles. So in this one here, we have our Cove Dutch lap. You can see how that Cove takes over there. We have a sloped channel there. We have a nickel gap there, as well as this is that V groove that we're seeing there. So if you're looking for a siding option, I would suggest go hit up Westlake Royal Pros, check out that Drew exterior and try it out. Steve, Brian, you guys know Joe. Joe is the godfather of building science. I mean, literally all the stuff that we're learning over the years originated with Joe. And Joe's humble enough to say it probably originated with someone 20 years older than you, right, Joe? Well, maybe 100 years older than me. There you go. There you no, go. Here, here's the problem. You know, they used to write this thing down in, in, in books. Books? What yeah, is that? yeah, and they're, they're found in libraries. But, I've never been. Yeah, but they're really old books, so you have to actually ask a librarian. That involves a social interaction, which is why you youngsters <laughs> have no clue. And it Can we test the librarian? librarian? You're going to have to find an old librarian. Well, and it helps if you can translate German to understand what they said to begin with. True. Well, no, 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 no. You know, the, 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 the Brits and the Canadians and the Swedes were actually smarter than the Germans. Look at that. Yeah. That's impressive. Yeah. yeah. Who, who knew? I mean, don't, don't, don't buy a Scandinavian car. Buy a German car. But go with Scandinavian technology that the Canadians stole. That works. I love it. All right, y'all, we're at the Timber HB booth. This is a company that makes insulation for wood, and we're gonna play a little bit of Stump the Chump with Joe, uh, with three of his fanboys here <laughs> fawning over him. So Joe, I mean, the first thing that I think when I think of this is like, really, wood for insulation? This seems wrong. Isn't this gonna get wet and just disintegrate on us in a job site? Uh, no, not if you manage the water. And this might come as a shock to you, but uh, we've been making wood fiber sheathing before you were born. Really? Yeah, it's called asphalt impregnated fiberboard. For sure, I've seen it. Black, black tent test. Yep. And so think of black tent test that was a half an inch that's now four inches. And, 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 and guess what? Why did we use it? Because it passed moisture in both directions. Uh, it's okay to get wet if it dries. That's right. Not good if it gets wet and doesn't dry. Stays wet. There you go. I've heard you say at least a hundred times the word hydric buffer capacity, and I love that term. Is this helping us to be able to absorb some moisture in the air or maybe even an incidental leak on the job as well? Uh, hydric buffer is a big word that means, hey, it sucks water up. It's a sponge. It's right. blotter paper. Right. Now, blotter paper works as long as it also dries. Yep. And so you have to design your wall that when it does get wet, it has to be able to dry to either the inside or the outside or both sides. Yeah. Otherwise, the hydric buffer ain't buffering. Not doing anything for no. you. Yeah. So in your mind, Joe, what's the big benefit of having this new American company making a product that we've seen in Europe a bunch? Well, the problem with the Europeans is they don't know how to use it properly. <laughs> and so they, the Europeans don't know water management. True. And the Europeans are just learning air management from the Canadians who stole it from the Swedes. Interesting. And so, 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 the, the, so, the, so the problem was is that um, they put this on a, um, on a mass wall without drainage on the back of it, without drainage on the front of it. Hmm. And then they exported it to Great Britain to get even for losing the Second World War. <laughs> so the Brits put it on wood. And the only people that are happy in Britain are the fire people because the buildings are too wet to burn. That was funny, guys. Too that is wet pretty to, funny. Too wet to burn? That's pretty bad. So, you know, it's, it's okay to use this if you design it to dry. Right. And, and so the, the Germans got away with it because, you know, rocks don't rot. So you got three, four wides of, 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 of brick as a mass wall. Yep. You can do stupid stuff because the wall doesn't care. It's the wall, wall, the wall goes, yeah, 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 yeah. We don't care. You put that on a on a, on a British wood frame wall, and oh my God, that. And so, well, they said, well, the wood fiber doesn't work. Well, it actually does work if 
you drain it, yeah. and you and you have a, 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 an air gap uh, between the cladding and, and this on the outside. Makes sense. If you don't do that, you're doomed. Yeah, for sure. Now ask us how we learned that with fiberboard in the '60s. Yeah, which some of it's in great shape because it could stay dry, never got wet, or was able to dry. But if it got wet and stayed wet, that's where things are a problem. Yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was a horrible problem. Guess what led to the, uh, the asphalt impregnated fiberboard failures? What was it? Plastic vapor barriers. Ah. Yeah. Now all of a sudden we can't dry anymore to the inside. Right, and guess who invented that? The, the Canadians. <laughs> And, 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 and why hey, where are you from, Joe? Canada. <laughs> okay, just making sure. Just and guess, and guess That's what? why he can say that. Uh -huh. yeah. I'm not going to say it. And guess, and guess what? We exported that technology to the United States to get even with the Wayne Gretzky trade. <laughs> if you take our best hockey player, we're going to rot your houses. So Polly is good, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Jesus. Enjoy. Steve, have you used any of this wood fiber? We have. Before? The Build Show Build Boston is a full timber HP insulation package there. Okay. I got two questions for you, Joe. One, you talked about this being in Europe. In Europe, you know, Germany, uh, Great Britain, they might be one or two climate zones. In America, we have eight climate zones. How do you feel about this across a spectrum of climate zones in America? Are you ready? Yes. It needs to go both ways. As long as it can drive both ways, we're good to go. So drain the rain and dry in both directions. There you go. There you Makes go. a lot of sense. Yeah. Second question. The board, how do you feel about putting this under a slab? Yes and no. Great answer. Let me explain. Yeah. That's like telling me, yeah, you could do it, Steve, but I'm not going to be responsible for when it fails. <laughs> <laughs> no. I, if, you, if you do it the way I'm going to tell you, I'll be responsible for it, and I'm going to tell you the way it works so that you stay out of trouble. There you go. It needs a capillary break, so you put it on six inches of stone or four inches of stone with no fines, and guess where the vapor barrier goes? On top. On top. Well, why will that work? Well, because the insulation is warmer than the ground, and when the insulation gets wet, moisture always goes from what? More or less. to coal. Yep. The worst place to put the vapor barrier would be under it. Yep. Uh, now, if you have a low water to cement ratio of concrete, the concrete is the vapor barrier and the air barrier. Hmm. I mean, concrete could do that. Well, yeah, just ask Jimmy Hoffa. <laughs> that was good. You, that hadn't, was good. Heard, was you, had, good. you hadn't heard that one. I, mean, you I hadn't heard that one coming. Okay, just the Jimmy Hoffa reverence. Now, where where it gets where it gets tricky is if you want to use a shallow frost protected foundation. Right. What you have to do is you have to extend the granular layer completely mm -hmm. under it. Then you have to put a vapor barrier on the top that also is drainage. So I'd use a dimple board. Yep. Yep. And and I've I've done I've done that with rock wool and mineral wool. Mm -hmm. I've done it with uh, EPS, which is really a, a horrible yep. product if it doesn't have a capillary break. So you're telling me you could use this, you could use mineral wool, you could expand with polystyrene. You use all of them if they have a capillary break and you protect it on the top. What, is, what about turning up the wall in a basement? Um, on the outside, you need your black dead dinosaur juice on the whatever, and you need a drainage mat on the outside. And then it works fine. That's right. So let's put it on the inside. Um, where do I put the drainage mat? Between the concrete and this. And then I put gypsum board over this with a acrylic latex paint as a vapor throttle to slow the flow down. So I didn't hear you use the word barrier. You said the word throttle. I think that's interesting because that's what I'm hearing you say in general is we don't want to have things that are zero perm plastics, for instance, except for a few places in the house. Is that true? Well, you know, you, you want a beautiful vapor throttle for a flat roof, right? Yep. You want a beautiful vapor, perfect throttle vapor barrier if you've got below grade groundwater and you can't control hydrostatic pressure, right? Yep. There are all kinds of places where I need something that's insanely vapor closed, and there are other places where I don't need it. Yep. And the problem is, is that people think that you you only have one option, and the option you, you don't have. You have yeah. all kinds of, yeah. of, of, of options. You know, one of the things that I've, I've used in my whole career that I took away from you, Joe, is the use of the word barrier and the concept that yeah, barriers are okay until something gets inside the barrier, yeah. and then all bets are off. Right. So well, why create a barrier? 
Well, the idea is it was nice to be able to have things dry. Mm -hmm. So what are the most dangerous places in a building? The answer is punched openings. And what's the most famous punched opening? A window. Mm -hmm. There are only two kinds of windows in the world. Windows that leak and Hello. windows that will leak. Yes. And windows are like people. As windows and people get old, we leak. You youngsters have no freaking idea what's coming to you. <laughs> and so that. what you do, in the old days, we called that incidental water because it could dry in both directions, yeah. but it could dry in both directions because we didn't have plastic on the inside and we didn't have OSB and we didn't have a lot of insulation. Yep. So we had enough energy available to dry. So windows and doors, doors are worse, need a pan flashing. So because the incidental water isn't incidental anymore. So you win or lose at your windows and doors, then what? Balconies and decks, right? So windows, doors, balconies, and decks. We're way better with roofs and foundations than we are with windows, doors, and balconies, and desks. Well, well why? Because when you screw up a roof, you know it. It fails really quickly. Yep. See, when you screw up a wall, you don't know for 10 or 15 years. See, stupid should hurt right away. See, when you're a kid, you put your hand on the stove. Oh, shit, that hurts. You know, the, yep. the stupid action and the response is immediate. But if you put your hand on the stove and it doesn't burn for 10 years, you're not going to worry about it. What has changed is because we've changed the materials that have changed the energy flow, which means we have to be better with everything. That's right. So anyway, that's that's the that's the big takeaway. So good. Guys, if you're not familiar with Joe, he's the original founder of BuildingScience.com. He's written articles for, I don't know, 40 years on buildingscience.com, 30 are you, years. Are you calling me old? I'm not calling him old. I am calling him midlife, like me, midlife. But he's got a wealth of free knowledge at buildingscience.com for you to go consume. You should absolutely go check it out. Amazing stuff. Thanks for hanging out with us, Joe. It was a pleasure. Appreciate it, brother. Steve, Always good a pleasure to see you. Good nice to meet you. We're at the Timber HP booth at JLC Live. I don't know about y'all, but I'm tired. This is an amazing show, a ton of great people, a lot of really interesting products. By the way, if you're a manufacturer who watched this video and you don't want to miss out, you're having a little FOMO now, seeing all these tool companies and interesting builders here at this show, come sign up to join me at buildshowlive.com. And if you tell them, quote, Matt sent me, then they're going to give you a special bonus. Informa is the world's largest trade show company, and that's my partner for Build Show Live coming up in November in Austin, Texas. I hope to see you there. It's going to be an amazing show. Guys, if you're not currently a subscriber, hit that subscribe button below. We've got new content here every Tuesday and every Friday. Follow me on Facebook or Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show.